Welcome everybody. If you've been doing JavaScript for any length of time, you've probably dealt with arrays. And once you have an array, there's probably going to be a time when you need to remove something from that array. Unfortunately, if you go to Stack Overflow, which I just did to check to make sure this was still true, uh, there's a currently an outdated uh, version of how to remove something from an array. It's now 2017 at the time I'm making this video. That means we have ECMAScript 2015 available to us and pretty much full support for dot .filter. So let's put it to work and see how it works. First of all, filter is a property on the array.prototype object. So you can call it uh, as a method on any array. It filters over the array. It returns a new array and it does not change the original array. This is very useful if you are trying to follow functional programming uh, ideas in that immutability is a very useful thing because it prevents changes in state that can be hard to predict. Uh, it takes a predicate function, so whatever function is going to be used to evaluate the items in the array to determine whether or not they should stay in the array or be filtered out. It bases filtering on an evaluation of an expression to a Boolean, which is true or false. And if, it, if that evaluation turns true based on the value and the uh, evaluation criteria, then it will be uh, returned into that new list. If it is false, it will be emitted from the new list, which is how you filter something out. So the way I like to think of it as the base situation, the the general situation is always true, and I'm looking for a situation that will provide a false value. So let's start looking at it. I've got this array of numbers. I tend to, to do this in a lot of my examples because they are a great, easy place to start. But instead of just 1 through 10 without any numbers skipped, I have multiple versions of a few of the numbers. And we'll be using that a couple examples down. So. First of all, we have a predicate function called isEven. And as you might expect, it will return true if the number is even by calculating the remainder of the uh, number after it's divided by 2 and asking if that is equal to 0. So if there is no remainder after the number is divided by 2, then you can expect that number is, in fact, even, hence isEven. And so if to call uh, is even on the uh, nums, we can simply go nums.filter, pass in is even, and it will return all the even numbers in the array. So let's go here. Right, oops. We're getting used to them. It's fun though. Uh, and then if I do node run. And then there's all the even numbers in the array. And yes, I know I can run them from down here. Uh, if I do something like that, node run. Uh, but it actually is kind of tough to read because it doesn't scroll very well. Uh, so here we are. You can see our example, every even number from our nums array. And as you might expect, you could also take the is even and invert it. So in this case, you're just returning is even called with num passed in and then inverted and that will give us all of the odd nums. I'll show you this just for completion's sake, um, but I really think it's self-explanatory. No run. And there's all our odd numbers. All right, one question that you might have come up across before is how to create a set, which is a list of all the unique values in an array. Well, laundry's done, if you could hear that chiming. Uh, <laughs> I started making this video to wait for it to be done, and I guess my prep took too long. Uh, but if you're making a set, then one way that you can do that is very easily with filter. So you'll need the list to already be ordered. So that's why I've ordered it already, uh, just so that I don't have to bother calling dot .sort um, and getting, adding some unnecessary complexity. But I'll call dot .filter on the nums array and pass in my make set predicate function. And what that will do is accept num, which is the value that's passed in from the nums array, and the index, because filter, just like map, 
passes the index of the value that it, it excuse me, that it is evaluating at the same time that passes in the value. So all we can ask is num equal to the next value in the nums array. And if it is not, then we should uh, emit it. So, or if it's not, then we should keep it. Uh, and if it is, then we should emit it so that the last, in the last instance of every unique value will be kept in the array. And so what we do here is remove that guy so that we can see it. And this should give us 1 through 10. And there we go. There's our set. And so, again, that does rely on it being in proper order. Uh, but that could be done with strings if you could find some way to sort and group strings together so that all the repeated values are side by side. You could do the exact same thing with strings, which is pretty cool and pretty simple. You don't have to bother using the new keyword or anything weird. So next up, if we want to remove a specific element from a value, or sorry, spe specific element from an array by value, this is what I saw in the outdated Stack Overflow example or question. So I've got my usual names that I like to use. Uh, I've got three of them, and then I've got some strings. Uh, I've got uh, one of the names, some gibberish, a uh, name that's not from the names array, another name from the names array, and then fun, fun, fun. Uh, and then all I'm doing for my predicate function is I'm creating a closure. So I can pass in a value that I want to remove, and then the predicate function is actually here. So this item will be the item that's passed in from whatever array I call dot filter on. So down here, uh, whoop, down here I should say, I'm calling dot filter on names, and then I am passing in as the function is not with the value Leslie. So as you might expect, it will take names and return in a new a new array with all the values that are not Leslie. And so, remove the comments on that guy. Eh, there we go. And we have the names that are not Leslie, which is pretty cool, pretty simple. Uh, and for some reason, people aren't talking about that. That seems like the most logical way I could think of to do it, because now we have this nice reusable function that we can use over and over again. Let's say we wanted to remove multiple values by name, or sorry, multiple uh, items from the array by value. We could use the uh, spread, or this would be rest. This would be the rest operator, or operator, which will take individual values that are passed in and group them up into an array. And so then we can use the tilde operator, which inverts the, well, multiplies something by negative one and then subtracts one from it. So in other words, if it's not, if, because index of returns negative one, then the tilde of will give it uh, a value of zero because it'll go from negative one to plus one and then go down to zero. And then if we invert that, that'll go from being converted to false into converted to true. And so we want to, uh, remove anything that is not in the um, remove anything that is not one of the items that we passed in. So if we're passing in two, for example, and it's not, then we want to make sure that if that returns a value, that value should be false, which is what happens up here, this guy, because it will say two is a, a the value of two is present in the items that we passed in. Or sorry, geez, I'm getting myself all turned around here with items and vals. We are evaluating an item. If that item is one of the values that we passed in, so in this case two, then we want to remove it because we're doing anything that is not one of these values. Whew, sorry for that. I was uh, having some problems with my pronouns in my head. All right. So if we remove those values, then we no longer have, I think it was 2, 4, and 8. 2, 8, and 4. And as you can see, there's no 2s, there's no 8s, and there's no 4s. So we're just fine. And I won't try to explain the next time that we do that with strings. I'll just show you that it works because my uh, 
my explanation got all fuzzy there, but hopefully it's clear enough uh, based on the code. So you can also do the same thing by index. So if you wanted to remove an item with a specific index, then you'll pass an index to store it in a close. You'll close over that index to store it in your predicate function. And then your predicate function will receive an item, the index of that item. And then you can simply ask whether or not the index is equal to the uh, index of the item that was passed in. And if it is not, then it will return true. So it will be kept in the array. But if it is equal to the item index, then it will be false. So it will remove that, the item at that index that you passed in. So uh, if I take all strings, if you look at the top of the screen, uh, let all strings equal. The index is the gibberish. Or the index 1 is the gibberish that I passed in. So if I say remove the, um, if I filter all strings and say that I only want the items that are, are not at index of 1, then I should get something that's not gibberish. And there we go. There's our list of everything that's not gibberish. In other words, everything that's not at index 1. Likewise, my very confusing, messy example or explanation of what happened above, uh, I'm removing the items that are at index 1 and index 4. Same premise. Oops, I'm in the habit of doing the exclamation mark to run the code. And so we've removed the gibberish and fun, 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 because fun, fun, fun was at index 4. Remember, in the original array. So it does not matter that we've removed an item already. We're just referencing the original array and returning a brand new array. So that original array is left untouched. Oops. Zero. There we go. OK, and we can do the same thing with some more Strings, these, these ones are actually probably a bit simpler. I wrote these first in my examples. Um, but then I got all excited about these guys because I saw what people were talking about on Stack Overflow. But we can do some basic things like passing in a string value, evaluating the length of it. And if it's less than or equal to 3, then we will return it. Otherwise, it will return false and be filtered out. Likewise, we can invert that and return the values as what are uh, greater than 3. And we can search a, or we can match a specific part of a string. So in this case, it will return true if it finds a match for the n character. So that one's a bit more interesting. Let's, uh, let's actually look at that one. So there we go, Andy and Ron. Those are both words that have N in them. And based on that concept of matching a word, you can do something a bit more interesting. So maybe you had a list of files that needed to be matched for specific keywords, which is something I had to do at work the other day. So if you had a list of those files, you could then iterate over them with filter, use something like this has match function, pass in whatever keywords you needed, in this case, I'm just passing in an array of names, which is the same array from above. It will then evaluate each string to see if it exists or matches, depending on what you need to set up. Uh, see if it matches one of the items in that uh, list. And then it will return them into a new list if it finds a match. So that all we get in return is a new array of everything that matched. So in this case, Every, this will be from the list of all strings. It will just give me back the names, because we were looking for matches from the names array. And so I get Leslie and Ron. And if we go up to uh, the all strings, you can see that the only names that are actually in both arrays are Leslie and Ron. So I think that was my last example. Let's head to the bottom. Yep. So if you're not using filter and you're removing items from an array, what the heck are you doing? Use filter. It's fantastic. It only takes a bit of time to get used to. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot of ifs, ands, weird things like that, at least when you're getting started. Just remember that it's whatever this uh, evaluation or this expression evaluates to that determines whether or not the item is passed in. If it's 
true or false, that's all that matters. So come up with some interesting things. I'd be happy to hear if you have any questions or if you come up with some cool ideas or maybe don't like the way I structured some of my code. Tell me about it. Like the video if you like the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.